Hello, friends. Uh, welcome to this series of motivation, right? In the space of data science and data analytics. A lot of our students got trained through us and they got placed in various companies. And we started off the series and we thought we will get motivated by listening directly to the, uh, you know, directly from the people who actually have gone through this journey in terms of getting successfully placed in the field of data. We have with us Anusha. Anusha is working as not a data analyst, but as a data scientist, right? So that's small change that we have to make. But Anusha is working as a data scientist in a company called as IPAC, Indian Political Action Committee. And she's working in the space of advanced analytics. Hi, Anusha. Thank you so much for providing your time. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad yeah. to be here with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anusha. So Anusha, we will get started with the first question. The first question is, while I was going through your profile, I figured out that you were working as a digital marketing executive. Yeah. What was your journey like from digital marketing executive to a data scientist? It's not a small thing. It's a big leap, right? You are moving from a different domain into a domain which is most sought after. Data scientist. Today, everyone wants to become a data scientist. But how could you actually make it happen? Yeah, we want to listen to you. Yeah, sure, sure. That's a definitely a valid question. I'll brief you that all my journey right from a digital marketing executive, I've been a digital marketing strategist to a data scientist right now. So I started with the digital marketing strategist because I was more obsessed with and passionate with whatever is more popular right now in the uh, present generation. So digital marketing seemed uh, the best thing to get into. So I got into there. So I just initially started with all the uh, advertisement things. I mean, the advertisement across all the platforms. Then uh, it was a course that uh, I had taken regarding the advanced marketing thing, where I've done the performance marketing and the performance analytics, which is the advanced thing in the marketing that is more of uh, related to the advanced analytics thing, just like what we, uh, we start with in data science. That was a base in the marketing thing that we had done. So generally people think of marketing just as a marketing platforms and the ads and all that they run, but there is something beyond that. What I want to uh, discover in marketing, the advanced thing was the uh, performance and the behavioral marketing. So we had the targeted marketing and like we targeted the right users. So that kind of analysis was done on all the campaigns that were run by the marketing people. So mostly to be precise, I was in the marketing field in the advanced analytics part of the marketing. So where we do the performance marketing and the analysis. So even in data science, we have the data, right? So where we analyze the data, we analyze the users, the age group, the different factors that the users belong to. So that was the actual sector where I worked in digital marketing. So then I got to uh, know about the data science and the AI that was emerging where I, I could put entire my skills and my knowledge into the advanced analytics thing where actually that makes more sense than from the marketing. And then I would like, like at that point when I just entered data science, I thought like I can implement these machine learning things to marketing. But later I have discovered many more things that we can do with data science and AI right now in the present world. We have many real time problem statements to solve with these skills. So I started uh, getting into 360 digit EMG as a, I mean, a data scientist intern and all that. So got to be trained by the team ma'am and the classes were awesome. Like the time punctuality and everything was awesome. So that's how the journey started me and got me into 360 digit EMG. So before getting into it, like I first got to know about 360 digit EMG by researching upon it. The first thing we do everywhere. So I researched about it. I found the course structure very interesting. Like I mean, covering each and every topic that needs to be learned by a data scientist and an AI engineer. So I gone through the course structure, everything was awesome. And, and then I just got into the Institute, the feedbacks and the reviews were also awesome. So I just wanted to explore it more and learn whatever is possible and get into the data field, like more clearly into the data team. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anusha. That was really motivating to understand your journey from being a data a digital marketing executive to now becoming a data scientist in a company which does an amazing job in the space of advanced analytics. 
And uh, I have another question for you, Anusha. Do you think a career gap after education should really bother someone to pursue this field of data analytics or data science and actually get into that field? What are your thoughts on that? Okay, gap. Okay, this is the thing that concerns everyone. Like whoever has a gap in their career, the direct answer is no. Like the gap doesn't matter at all because it's all your hard work and whatever that you put in to get into any field that you want. So the time gap is just the break that you have taken. Maybe you'd be utilizing the time into something that you want to get into later. You'd never be free, right? You'll be upskilling yourself. So the time gap will be a benefit to you, like to take it in a positive way, to upskill yourself in the respective field that you want to get it to. So like I had a time gap of two years, like it was some personal things like marriage and all like girls have like that kind of time gap, but I have invested the time into getting to the digital marketing and the analytics field. So I utilize that in a way and turn my gap, which everyone thinks as a negative thing into a positive thing to make it much better. So now I'm in a good position compared to what my friends are right now. So they have started their career earlier in getting into some software engineer, something that they didn't have an idea about. But now I'm in a field where I actually wanted to be and I'm a data scientist and I'm proud to say that like I'm in a good field, like everyone is dreaming to be into. Even with the gap that we have, filled it with a good thing. So I say Absolutely. that doesn't matter at all. Well said, well said, Anusha. I mean, I'm also of the same opinion, right? Yeah. That just because you have a gap, in your career, that means after your education, you were doing something, you were figuring out probably way to get in. And uh, being a woman and in the Indian context, probably, you know, family would be pushing you to get married and there were many things, uh, many hurdles that you had uh, overcome. And now you're a successful data scientist. I'm sure a lot of people are looking uh, towards you, trying to get some inspiration, your friends also. Yeah. Probably they'll be calling you and asking you on, hey, how did you get into this field of data science? We also yeah. aspire to be in that field. Sure, that happens. This is the kind of field that we are in. And I want uh, to mention one more thing. So many people think that marriage is a barrier, but for me, it became a boon because I got a husband that who had encouraged me to learn more things and whatever, do explore and know what I am. So I'm in this yeah. position just because of his support and all that he has given me well compared to my previous life that I have led. So that became a boon. So I have reached my achievements over here right now, like more ahead, but at least in the way to reach that. Absolutely. Women empowerment is extremely important, Anusha. And I'm glad yeah. that you got a husband like that. But Thank if you have that aspiration, right, your husband would support you at the end of the day. Exactly. If you would have told that, you know what, I'm not interested in working, <laughs> then he would not have given that support, uh, yeah. right? Good, good. And uh, another question that I have, probably the final question is, Anusha, what do you think about the internship opportunity which was provided by InnoDataTix? Do you think it really helped you? Or how was your journey like? Yeah, really it helped me a lot. So the problems that I'm solving right now after getting into the actual company, uh, I got an kind of simulated experience in the internship. So we have worked on projects that were like real time simulated mostly. So we were into every phase of what a real time project has. So right from the data collection to the deployment point and even the team management, teamwork, time, presentations, everything. So we had an exposure to get to know everything that happens in a real time world and in a real time company. So we know the expectations of the managers and all. So we got an exposure to that. And one more thing, the projects were also like uh, specific to a particular problem statement. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. So we concentrated on that particular problem statement. For me, like I have done a few projects related to AI, like the facial login system, which we wanted to incorporate in our uh, LMS, the learning management system. So we have worked on that, the liveliness detection. These were all the real time issues that we need to solve into. Not exactly that might be the issue, but we'll know to uh, solve that in a particular way. 
the part to solve that. I mean, the project management and all that, we'll get to know that. <coughs> Sorry. And the support that the mentors have given us. So we had these WhatsApp groups and even like the uh, weekly meetups that took the progress of the projects. And Raju sir was a project manager. He led it, like uh, managed all the teams very well. And the response was very good. So we tried to uh, incorporate everything that we have learned in our uh, theoretical classes. We have practically implemented that in our projects. So whatever, so we, the data science classes were done by Deepti Ma'am in our, in our particular agenda. So she has taught us the concepts very well, but we had, we still at the end of the uh, sessions, right? We had a doubt in our mind. How well can we implement this if we get placed into a company? So that got resolved when we got into the projects, got through the loopholes and whatever we have stuck it and resolved them. So the experience is very good. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anusha, for that, uh, you know, aspiring talk. Do take care, have some hot water. Yes, uh, but yeah, absolutely, I echo the same thoughts. And now what we have done is we have improved upon the number of projects which people work, uh, Anusha, just for information and for the knowledge of everyone else. The moment they, are, they complete 30% of the project, that is the moment they complete text mining and LNP, we are making them work on one project end to end, right from understanding the business problem to data collection to deploying the model and monitoring and maintaining the model. And as soon as they complete the ensemble techniques, they'll do another project with the concepts that they learn. And finally, after deep learning concepts, they do the third project. Then they get into two other projects. So we, uh, you know, based on our trial uh, trials and experiments, understood that the more the number of projects which people work, or the more confidence they're gaining and they are easily able to clear the interviews. Yeah, yeah. Right? So this is the journey that, uh, I mean, this is how we've tweaked the curriculum a bit, the training methodology a bit. Well, awesome, sir. And one more thing to mention while we are, while I have gone through different interviews, right? So I have faced many interviews, got two to three offer letters. Upon them, I have chosen IPAC. But in this interview procedure, I got to know that most of them focus on the projects and the real-time experience that you had. <coughs> Sorry. Wonderful, wonderful, Anusha. Yes, that's absolutely right. So you just told us that uh, you got two to three offers and then you cherry pick one. That goes to say <laughs> how dedicated you were, how committed you were, and how hardworking you were. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anusha, for your time. And it yeah. was really a pleasure talking with you here. Yes. And hopefully this has motivated a lot of our students. Yeah, one final statement from you, Anusha. What, what message do you want to give to our students? Like, I initially want to, like, many of my friends have came up with this thing, like, they are failing in many of the interviews. I don't want to regret them. So, instead of regretting, take them as a practice sessions or, like, kind of whatever errors that you might be doing in the actual interview that you want to crack. So, that you can overcome that. I mean, concentrate on the concepts that you are uh, lagging behind. Or you can get to know what you are lagging behind and concentrate and focus more on that thing. So that you can crack the interview at one point of time, definitely you'll do that. And and have patience to complete your projects till the end and handle with all your teammates and everything. Because even in our projects, we have seen many people leaving in, in between because of some kind of issues. But we need to have that perseverance to complete the project so that we'll get that confidence, as you said. So we can be more confident with the skills that we have learned. So I want to suggest that to my friends. I, I take this as a golden opportunity to share my experience with it, all of you. So I really thank you. Lucky. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anusha. So there we go, friends. The one statement that Anusha is telling you all is have perseverance. Take your projects until closure and job will be yours. Thank you so much, Anusha. It yeah. was really an honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.